Welcome, Eric, to Metalidium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about Thunderbird Divine, um, this new album, and more things relating to the Metal War in general. So we just start by asking, so how are you How are you doing today, and how is the band Thunderbird Divine during the last couple of days? Where, what year, sorry. Um, so, let's see. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. It's good to see you. Thank you for having, having me on. Um, How's the band doing? Uh, the band's doing really well. I mean, we're in a good place. You know, we're the record's about to come out um, on the uh, on the thirtieth, so you know we're pretty excited about that. Uh, and Tommy over at Black Doomba, Tommy Stewart's the guy who's putting out the record over at Black Doomba Records, um, and uh, he could not be more supportive. Uh, and uh, he's he's super nice guy, and he really likes the music, which really helps. You know. Um, so we're we're doing great. You know, we just got we just got to see uh, the early, pre you know, the er the first pressings that went out to um, to people who who pre ordered it and stuff. And it the it just looks it looks amazing. The record looks really great, and um, it sounds really great. So you know, we're 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 doing well. You know, and uh, my and my bandmates and I, you know, we're we're having a great time together. We enjoy each other a great deal. So that's important. You know. Um, we're just, you know, we're, I think I could safely and honestly say that we're in a pretty good, happy place right now. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Okay. Okay. So talking about from this new album, when, when did you start writing songs for this new one? Uh, and, or, uh, and all the songs new or did you rescue any compositions that were left out of the previous albums? Um, no. So all the stuff is... Let me back up. Um, when we put out the last record in uh, 2019, um, or 2020 rather, we were we we were had a bunch of this stuff that's on this record now that's on Little Wars. We had a bunch of that stuff written, and we were planning to make another record very shortly afterwards. But um, we all know what happened in 2020. COVID hit everybody. Um, and so, uh, our schedule got all screwed up with that. And so uh, our writing process got screwed up. We lost a couple of guys, uh, band members who had to quit for one reason or another. Um, so some of the stuff's a little bit older from about four years ago, stuff that we'd already written and we're ready to put, you know, put out, but you know, we couldn't, we couldn't go into a recording studio. We couldn't be around each other you know, none of that stuff for a long time. So a lot of that stuff had to sit. I think a lot of bands got crippled by COVID. I mean, as a, in addition to the world, of course, but the way it hit us was that uh, we couldn't put out another record as soon as we needed to, as soon as we would have liked to. So we had to sit on some of the songs for a while. And, um, and again, we, we had some turnover with band guy, you know, with uh, band members and, um, after that, we had to get back up to speed. And then in the process of getting back up to speed with, you know, new guys, uh, we wrote some new stuff. So we ended up with this, um, with this co combination of newer songs and older songs. So some of the songs are about, could be as old as about four years old. And some of them are only within the past year and a half. Okay. Okay, nice, nice. So this new, all well, this new little war, Little Wars is your third album in a row for 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 the band. So I also saw that the, the band is, is still composing new music. So for you, when what motivates you or inspires you to to give you such a consistent release schedule, especially in an era that people tend to listen to album less, and there are so many other releases competing for attention. Um. Well, what motivates me is that. Um... I'm a musician, right? I'm a creator, and a, uh, uh, it's it's weird to call yourself an artist and and whatnot. But uh, at this point in my life, what else am I supposed to call myself? I've been putting out music for many years now, um, so it's kind of in my DNA to write new songs. It's kind of uh, the way I'm wired to to want to write more music. And you know, as soon as I pick up a guitar or start messing around with any instrument. Uh, you know, I start fooling around with it. And the next thing you know, like, oh, that's kind of neat. I wonder, 
what else I could do with this. And the next thing you know, I'm writing a song, you know, and I'm fortunate to be working with other guys who kind of work the same way. We're always ready to sort of like explore, uh, explore something and try and see what comes next. Sometimes it's jamming. Sometimes it's like, oh, I have this riff or like, isn't this kind of neat or whatever. And the next thing you know, we all start sort of just fooling around with it. Next thing you know, there's a, a song showing up. You know, so I don't I don't think I actually have any choice but to write songs because it's it's part of my um, it's part of the way I'm built. Um, and so we keep writing songs because that's what we do. And then uh, we keep putting them out because like, what am I supposed to do with them once they're written? Right. Like we keep putting them out um, because we write these songs together. We're like we're not going to sit on them. We're going to play them. And then our mindset is, is comes from a recording mindset. So every time we write something, I'm like, okay, let's, you know, what instrument do you see that being? And, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and like, what do you hear happening here? And, you know, recording is kind of like proof of concept. Once you can play it, then you record it and you see like, does that sound like what I want it to sound like? And if it doesn't, how can I get it there? And if it does, like celebration let's you know there you go that song's done you know um so that's kind of our process and once you record it you definitely have to put it out right like what are you gonna like sit sit there and, you know sit around with like a bunch of recordings that you never did anything with that doesn't seem very bright to me like we play them in front of people might as well record them and let them be able to take them home too mm -hmm. okay so many bands and musicians see each album as a child. Each one especially is in own way. So, so what makes you what makes this album special to you? And how do you work to maintain your classic sound? Meaning while you're still composing new albums. Um, okay, first part first. Um yeah, this album is sort of like a child for for I mean for me and for my bandmates, absolutely. Um you know, the first one, the first album, the first thing we put out, um, Magna Sonic that we put out, that was a child. That was one that, you know, we wanted to impress everybody, right? So we like, we did a lot of, we only did four songs, but we worked really, really hard and we spent a good amount of money like on studio time fixing it up. And that kid was, you know, we wanted that kid to be sort of our representative in the world, right? We wanted that album to come out and be our representative in the world. So we wanted to put our best foot forward with it. Um, and I think it accomplished that. And the second one, uh, The Hand of Man, um, that's the one that got swallowed by COVID, unfortunately. We put that one out in February. And then in March of uh, 2020, the whole world went on lockdown. Um, so uh the hand of man never really got that that's the middle child at this point right so the hand of man didn't get the attention it, it deserved even though i think that's a really good record it didn't get what it what it deserved in my opinion and so now this one the third one little wars is it's a growing record um it it, it a lot of it lyrically are about it, the the songs lyrically are about sort of difficult times and frankly like little battles that people have that I personally have have had and I think that people can relate to um you know whether with whether it's with um relationship issues or addiction or whatever um all those things are present so this one is this kid this album is is it's showing growth and exploration like internally lyrically it, it does and uh musically it's an expansion we've done more different kind of things to make this record a lot of different instruments and things um and uh sort of just a different approach um and uh regarding what you're saying like you know it's is it like a lot of work to or whatever to to maintain a classic sound i i don't think so it's not like it, i don't it's not an effort to maintain any kind of sound because we do what we do is is honest to us um so 
in other words, it's it's a sincere representation of how we feel and how we work artistically. So it's not really hard to maintain that because it's 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 honest. It's 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 who we are, you know. Whatever it is we're gonna whatever music we're gonna make, it's gonna sound like us, you know, for better or for worse, it's gonna sound like us and who we are. So I don't find it difficult to maintain any particular sound because it's all stuff that's real for me and my bandmates. Um, it's not a, um, it's not any kind of struggle. No. Okay. Nice. 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 Interesting to know. So Thunder, Thunderbeer Divine has mm -hmm. always had a varied sound with his, with him. stoner, psychedelic stoner, a lot of rock or doom. What? So for this, what sounds can we expect on this new album? Are there any new sonic elements? Has your way of composing and recording sound changed much over time? Um, all right. So I'd say that one of the biggest differences in this record is um, our bass player, Josh, is a recording engineer and he has recording gear in his home. Um, so he has a studio there. Um, so we were able to demo all the songs very uh, uh, completely and meticulously we were able to re you know work on all these songs with fairly unlimited time i mean we kept we had deadlines and we had uh you know times that we wanted to meet for deadlines but we had a lot of time to mess with these songs and do things with them so it was um that was different because in the past you know It was get in the studio, you know, rehearse and rehearse, demo the songs, and then get in the studio and then try to knock it out in a couple of days because the studio time is expensive. Well, in this particular case, um, studio time wasn't as much of an issue because we did a lot of the recording at Josh's house. Um, so we had more time to go over things uh, and try to get things exactly where we wanted them to. Uh, where they where we wanted them to be and we were able to do a bit more experimenting so instead of doing like four songs which we would have done in the past because that's all we would have had time to do we were able to get nine songs in there um, because we had a more time for writing the songs and b we had more time to mess with them in the studio so for example where i'm at recording guitars at josh's house and we just have like a pile of amplifiers that you know probably like six amplifiers high and you know just plugging your guitar into each one be like is this the sound is this the sound is this the sound is that you know and you know different amplifiers and different pedals sort of piled up um so we had the time is what i'm saying to fool around with that kind of stuff um so sonically in terms of the kind of sounds we came up with for it you know we did have the capability to go in there and fool around with it so yeah we have Things like I have banjo on this record, uh, which I haven't done before. Uh, we've got uh, melodica, uh, harmonica, uh, uh, kalimba, which is a little thumb piano, um, 12 string guitar, electric sitar, uh, various sort of drone making machines. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of. Uh, for lack of a better word, uh, we did some samples, like we grabbed stuff off the internet and uh, chopped them up and reversed them to get some textures. Um, you know, it was a lot of fun, <clears throat> excuse me, to do those experiments. So there's some different sounds on this record. I mean, I think the core of what we're always going to do is always going to be a rock and roll thing. You know, it's always going to come from a place of a band that plays hard and, and works hard. So it's, I think there's always going to be that underlying found, uh, foundation of a good rock and roll band, but um, we will take a good rock and roll song and then sort of like layer it up and uh, mess with it in the studio to get all the sounds happening, you know? So that, that's, that was, that's how this record is different. Um, the sounds are, I mean, some of the, I mean, everyone's heard an, an electric guitar before, right? I mean, everyone knows what that sounds like. Everyone's heard drums before, but then there's other sounds that we just sort of invented in the studio because uh, we wanted to see if we could. And then 
once we found ones that made us happy, uh, that's what made it on the record. Hmm. Okay. Inter interesting to know also. So talking about now the promotion in this aspect, how do you feel the far reception so far for the singles to promote this album? So how do you usually how do you usually choose the singles for the uh for a new album, considering that your sound is very diverse with psycho psychedelic, progressive, stoner, doom? And it would be difficult to have one song that encompasses all the music to you put in each album. Yeah, um, that I would say is a factor. We definitely went back and forth. <clears throat> excuse me. We went back and forth about what out what songs sh should be the singles, and I think what we land ended up landing on uh, that the, the first song that we put out as a first single with um, with the video was uh, "Last Laugh." And that was the first one we put out. And I think we, the logic behind that, as I recall, was we wanted to put out, you know, a, a rocker. We wanted to put out a banger, something a little more, excuse me, a little more straightforward. Um, you know, that's an upbeat song that has a lot of, has a, a strong beat to it. It's got some movement to it. And it's not hard to get your head around what kind of song it is. It's a rocker, right? It's got a guitar solo. It's got a big chorus. Um, to our mindset, it's like, all right, we want to pull people in with the first single. Um, especially since we were making the video, we wanted to make it something fairly accessible. So we we took a a song that we felt that was uh, a rocker and and easy for your people to get their heads around. Not, not a lot of crazy experimenting on this. Yes. Um, so we decided for our first single to do something fairly accessible, catchy, and something we could make a video for, um, which was really pretty cool. It was really cool to make a video. It's, our drummer, Michael, uh, did the editing on the video. We shot the video with a professional uh, videographer, and then Michael Ed did the editing, and he just, I mean, I think it looks like it's uh, to me, it's a really good looking video. I'm very proud of it. Um, so we wanted something that we could make a video for that was performance based and fun to watch. So that's how we did the first single. And the second one was, I think, a song that we sort of tested by. Um, we all really liked um, um, Times Gone Bad. We, we all thought that was a good song. Um, just audibly, you know, it's got a lot of emotion to it. And um, so we decided to make that the second single. Um, and that one bore out because we, uh, I, I, I set that out to a couple of my friends when we finished it. And they were like, this song is great. Like, you should definitely use that as a single. So Last Laugh was when we decided on um, Times Gone Bad was the second one we decided on. And we chose them basically I mean, it, it's tough, right? Because they're your songs, right? So depending on how confident you're feeling on any given day, you're going to be like, this song is great, rah, 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 you know? Um, and then another day, it's like, yeah, this song's that's pretty good. It's okay, you know? Um, so sometimes you just kind of get a head check and send that song out to somebody like, what do you think of this? And, you know, if enough of your friends are like, you know what, that song is banging, you should definitely put it out. You know, it gives you the confidence to choose that one, especially for my friends who've already heard the whole of record. Um, they're like, oh, definitely do those two, you know. Um, so that's how we choose. That's how we chose them this time. We might use a different criteria for the future, but as it stands right now, it feels like a pretty good way of choosing a single um, by sort of deciding by uh, by committee. And as well as like in bringing in some folks from the outside to give their opinions. Um, but, you know, we're happy with the ones we chose for sure. They turned out really well. And the reaction in general, people seem to really dig them. So, you know, uh, either we're just lucky or we did something right. I don't know which it is. Okay. Okay. So I'm talking about now, how do you feel the reception of your fans and press to this new album has been so far? Uh, what have the reviews been like for you? Do you usually read reviews or criticism that are uploaded online? And how do you take these reviews? Um, well, first things first, everything that we've seen that anyone's had to say about the record has been positive, including you guys. So I thank you very much for that. I mean, I think you gave us an 8.9 out of 10, which is a pretty high score. 
Uh, so, you know, definitely not complaining about that. Um, but generally speaking, I haven't seen anyone. I mean, if there are bad reviews for the record, I haven't seen them. Um, I do read the reviews um, because like, I know how I feel about a record. You know, I know how I feel about the record and I think I look at it relatively objectively, but um a lot of reviewers, folks that are are folks that whose opinions I respect, uh, like JJ from the Obelisk, um, and uh, folks from Outlaw of the Sun, etc. These guys are people who have been listening to this kind of music for a long time, and I respect their opinions. So I'm curious to see what they have to say about them. I mean, it wouldn't keep me from making music if they decided if they said, you know, this record is terrible, it sucks, like don't anyone go near this record. It wouldn't stop me from making the record, making more records. It would make me wonder what how I got so far off track that no one liked it, but I would still keep making music. Um, but yeah, at this point, so far, every review that we've seen that I've seen has been positive. Uh, not, I, yeah, just very upbeat and positive. A lot of folks are saying similar things, um, which is to be expected when you put out a record that has a similar, you know, has a particular kind of sound. Um, but yeah, I, I read the reviews. Um, I wouldn't say that the criticism affects my choices in terms of being a musician or what I do. I mean, if somebody was to say, this is a terrible record, what's wrong with these guys? Um, it's a piece of crap. Why did they do this? I would, I would be surprised because I think it's, a, I, I think it's a good record. If somebody said it was terrible, I would be like, I think you're just wrong because it's not a bad record. <laughs> um, but, um, and I, I wouldn't, it would disappoint me. I was like, wow, that either we really missed the mark or this guy just doesn't get it, you know, um, which both could be possible, right? Like it could be possible that we missed the mark and it could be possible that whoever listened to it just doesn't get what this record is. Both are completely plausible and possible, but it doesn't seem to be the case because all the reviews we're seeing are positive. Um, but yeah, I read them. I'm, I'm curious to see what people think. Um, and um, a lot of, I mean, quite a few folks who have been doing reviews lately definitely seem to have gotten it. Like I said, uh, you guys seem to have absolutely understood what we were going for um, and enjoyed it. So, you know, uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice, nice, nice. So talking about the promotion of the new album, so what kind of plans do you have for this new one? Perhaps you will embark in, in tours in US, or perhaps yeah. you are already working a new album, or who knows, you are working perhaps a new songs, videos. Oh, what kind of plans do you have in general for the Thunderbird, Divine, and this new album? So, um, well, the record, like I said, the record comes out this week, the end of the week. Um you know, we're planning um, to continue. Uh, well, we're going to do more extended shows. We're going to play further, uh, stay, do a little more touring. Um, as long as it's, see, the big thing with touring is that financially it can be a real bite. Um, gas is expensive. Um, and so traveling to, to shows that are far away, you got to make sure, you know, that the, the, the shows will support financially what you're doing right so um you know and that that's a challenge because you know the further you get away and the weirder night you play it's you know the, the guarantee of money is not necessarily going to be there so it's 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 a challenge because we obviously want to play as many places as we can <clears throat> and and meet as many new people as we can but you know, it's got to be feasible financially. So um, we're definitely focused on expanding our range. Um, the big thing for us is trying to do more festivals. And we're, we're trying to like, we're trying to get out of playing in bars and places like that. I mean, obviously, we're always going to play bars. But um, yeah, the, the, the bigger value we feel is in playing festivals because you reach more people in a small amount of time and um, you can get to a festival a month almost, it seems. So we're looking to expand into doing that. Um, and I mean, ideally we would love to travel out of, out of the country 
Um, but again, financially, that has to make sense for us as well. Um, you know, there there's this sort of line between wanting to bring the music out to as many people as possible and, and you know, make sure the record sells as well as possible and also like not going broke in the process. So um, you got to got to sort of toe that you got to walk that tightrope where it's like, yes, we want to do as many shows as possible, but no, we don't want to be poor um, and lose our homes in the process because we're spending so much time on the road that we can't pay our mortgages, et cetera. So it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a tightrope, but yeah, we're, we're looking to expand as much as possible and reach as many new people. So we'll be doing that. Uh, we're always writing new stuff. Um, we're already a couple of songs deep on the next record uh, in terms of writing uh so that you know that's happening at, you know all the time writing new material is always happening we have a bunch of seeds of new songs and sort of partially formed songs and almost completely formed songs going at the same time um i don't think we're probably going to do another video for this record bless you um i don't think we're going to do another video uh for this record because we've done two um, and I think that's all that really makes sense to do at this point, unless there's some huge interest in another something and then we do another video. Doesn't seem likely. Um, but uh, yeah, we're constantly writing and uh, you know, we're always looking for new things sonically. We're looking, always looking for new things. Uh, and of course, song structures are exciting to fool around with. And um, we're always sort of seeing like what's going to work and what's not going to work. Um, I think the biggest thing for, for all of us is we just have a really good time working together. Um, you know, we enjoy each other and we enjoy making music together. And it's like a puzzle that you constantly kind of get to put together. And then each song is another piece that clicks together. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true. So we are very close to this interview, Eric. So being yeah. a man with a very, very, very sound, how do you see the issue of the labels? Fans and the media always try to label bands and sell playing with works like psychedelic rock, doom, stoner, you know, progressive. There is a lot of stuff coming now for the labels. So how do you describe your sound yourselves? Um, it's funny because I think each one of us has our own answer. Each one of the guys in the band has their own answer. Um, I usually say we're a rock band. I, you know, we're a rock band. Um, and and if I get if it depends on who I'm talking to also right so if I'm talking to somebody who's never heard you know say, uh, who's never heard Fu Manchu or uh, only knows Black Sabbath I'll be like okay I'll be like yeah we we play seventies riff riff based music um, and if you know Black Sabbath we're kind of like that but if they're more you know into the genres of music I'll be like yeah we kind of do um this thing where it's sort of like led zeppelin meets uh a uh, monster magnet meets hawkwind type thing um well it, it, like like i said it depends on who i'm talking to if you don't know who any of those bands are i'm wasting my time trying to compare ourselves to them right but if you are somebody who knows them um otherwise i'll just go, go with something more broad and say like yeah 70s style rock you know if you like blue oyster cult and black sabbath you probably would like us um i don't really care what people say we sound like um you know as long as they're as long as they're listening right so if they think you know oh they sound like this even if i think they're way off if they like it i don't care like once you put the music out it's not yours anymore right it's belongs to anyone who's listening to it So, um, you know, if people say we sound like, uh, I don't know, what was a recent review said something like we sounded like the MC5 jamming with Black Crows or something. And I was like, I don't hear either of those things, even though I think both of those bands are awesome. I don't hear that in our sound, but that doesn't mean they're wrong. It just means that's what they hear. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I think you can call it whatever you want to call it, our style, our sound, you can call it whatever you want. As long as you're listening to it, you know, like listen to it and enjoy it. And if you think it sounds, if you think it sounds like 
I hate God jamming with uh, the Everly Brothers, then cool, as long as you're digging it. You know, personally, um, I listen to our stuff and I think, you know, well, this song's kind of like a Black Sabbath song and this song's kind of like a Santana song and this song's kind of like, mm-hmm. you know, like that. I mean, and these are all just things that we like. You know, these are all just bands that uh, we like um, that are influences that we enjoy. And these are all just sounds that we like. And these are the songs that we dig. So um, I'll definitely start out and I'll be like, oh, this song's going to be this. And then by the time we get done finishing it, it doesn't sound like that at all anymore. Um, and that's what happens when you take, you know, four guys and get their creative input into a song. Next thing you know, it's like the thing that you thought was going to be a really heavy, you know, how many more times hmm. uh, Led Zeppelin type of song turns out to be more of like a Santana Frank Zappa song. What am I going to do? Complain? Those guys are awesome too. <laughs> so I'll just, you know, you know what I mean? I'm just going to write, we'll just keep writing them and keep doing them. Um, so yeah, the labels don't really concern me that much. You can call it whatever you want. Um as long as you're digging it you know so i I, that doesn't bother me in the least um people people are going to call things whatever that you know everyone wants to put a name on something so i just let them do it and and say thank you if they like it (laughs) (laughs) yeah well that is true that is true and on the other hand i imagine you also mentioned sometimes that your sound is reminiscent of certain bands that may have inspired you but yeah. have how but but have you ever been told that you saw that you sound like a certain band when you really don't? Well, I mean, again, it's like if somebody uh, hears something um, in our music that they think sounds like whatever, um, even if we didn't shoot for it, if that's what their ears are telling them, uh, who am I to tell them they don't hear that? You know. Um, um, I remember when we put out the first record, uh, somebody said, was in, I, we were interviewing and they said, um, this song sounds like the Beatles to me. And I'm hard pressed to hear uh, anything like the Beatles in that, on that record, especially in the song they were referring to. I didn't really hear it. And they're like, oh, were you going for a Beatles thing there? And I said, um, no, we were just going for that song. You know, we were just trying to make that song complete. They're like, oh, well, I hear a Beatles element to it. Okay. Like, if that's what you hear, who am I to tell you you don't? Um, they're not, we didn't try to make something that sounded like the Beatles, but if you hear the Beatles, it's certainly, we don't not like the Beatles. So, uh, you know, if that's what you hear in there, then Okay everyone's got different ears right so we're all going to hear things and make our own connections to stuff Hmm, Um, okay okay nice nice well eric the we come to the sad moment of this interview i hope you enjoyed this interview uh as i did and thank you very much for your time this new album is a great one it's tremendous album by the way congratulations on this new one maybe you. you have something to add to your latin fans and metalidium followers Man, I wish I spoke Spanish better. Uh, uh, I, unfortunately, I had Spanish in high school, so I wish I could say something, you know, deep and interesting in Spanish. But what I can say is, man, I'm so glad you guys are listening. Um, I'm so glad. I feel we're very honored um, and and flattered that anyone would listen to what we do at all. So the fact that you guys are listening and interested and the fact, uh, Javier, that you're interest in interviewing us means an abs- means a lot to us so we appreciate it greatly um you know we we thank you with everything we've got um anytime someone says they like what we do you know goes right to our hearts and makes us very very happy um so what i would say to all of you is and to everyone who's listening and to you as well uh, javier thank you very much for supporting us and listening and enjoying the record Um, that's what it's there for to be enjoyed so thank you very much and we appreciate you and we hope to see you sometime soon